Oh, it's happened again. My bow is in dire need of repair. My good bow has, well, the eyelet has gone to dust, literally. <laughs> the threads have, look at this. The threads have been ground to dust. Can you see it? There's all kinds of dust residue. Oh my goodness, wow. I mean, it just is kind of crazy that it's that it happens like this. Um, I need to get this bow back. This is the best bow I've ever owned. This is very strange. This bow, uh, I'm the first owner. The maker put on apparently something that is very unusual for this, for cello bows. And I can't understand why it's so unusual. Here's the original screw and brass eyelet that I got with the bow. This bow was made by a German in Germany. Um, the screw itself has a shaft that is apparently thicker than this shaft on this screw. And maybe it's not really apparent in this video, but uh, I mean, what for whatever reason, they, they either don't make this eyelet to fit this shaft anymore, or they're very, very rare apparently. And I've had this repaired one time here in my current location. Uh, they could not find the brass eyelet. I went asking around quite a number of shops in a uh, big city. This, this is very strange. I looked up on a website in Germany uh, to find this bra same brass eyelet. And apparently they don't have it or I don't understand terminology so I can't describe it properly. I asked, inquired about it. Um, I even called to see if I could get some answers and I used my best German, which is not good enough, I think. And so I had no choice. I wanted this bow badly and I got this put on. Now, I think that it's not adjusted properly and it puts a lot of pressure on the screw. Well, whatever the case is, it's not right and I'm going to, I'm going to have to get a new brass eyelet for that current screw at the very least. And hopefully it doesn't ruin my, my bow. I, I like that bow very, very much. I like it. It plays just the way I like. Um, now that same maker from Germany made a bow that is approximately twice as good. I played it. I mean, the balance was even better. It was phenomenal. And uh, it played to my mind so I can compare it only to a couple of other bows that I've tried. I tried a Sartori, I think it was, uh, so, something like that. It was it was a French-made bow from about 100, 150 years ago, and they were, I think at the time, asking 24000 or something for the bow. And I would have bought it had I had the extra cash lying around. Well, this bow... This, the, the bow that's twice as good as the bow I currently have, the best bow I have, um, was, to my recollection, very similar in nature. It was easy to play. The sound just kind of boiled out. Right? I mean, in, a, in an exuberant way, it was very easy to produce sound. And that was with my student full-size cello, which was a kind of shop cello lots of people working on various parts, putting it together, not just one person. Whereas this is a professional cello, one person making it from beginning to end. Um, now, having said that, I'm not entirely satisfied with this cello anyway. I'd really like to change my cello at some point if possible, because there are some, th this is a very quirky instrument and I, I would rather have, um, 
I think I'd rather have a little less personality and more consistency overall. Uh, also a bigger sound. I'd rather have a bigger resonant sound than more personality. And when I first got the cello, I kind of liked it, the personality in exchange for the for the consistency. Actually, to be honest, I didn't even know that I'd be lacking consistency. It just I I, I didn't even know how to say it. But now that I've owned a cello for 15 years, I think it's been 15 years, uh, I can say that this is an incredibly inconsistent cello. And I'm living in a place where the weather is just awful, just horrible on instruments. Now, another thing that I have to get done, I desperately need to get done, is to rectify my bridge situation. <laughs> and this tailpiece. I do not like this tailpiece. This bridge is something that I got carved in the States probably about eight years ago. Um, last year I had a new bridge carved finally and I'm totally unsatisfied with it. It's a thick student-like bridge. It just does not do justice to the quality of this instrument. So I'm gonna have to get a new bridge carved. Uh, some people may already have noticed that there's some funny things on the top of this bridge. Yeah, I actually uh, trying my best to make money go a little farther. I did my best to raise the strings a little bit. Didn't really work. Um, they're not lined up perfectly and also they kind of sunk down into my attempts of raising the string a uh, half millimeter, millimeter or so. Anyway, I'm going to be getting a new bridge here pretty soon. I'm going to get a new brass eyelet. Uh, I also need a bow rehair. The bow rehair that was done on this particular bow was botched, really just horribly botched. I mean, I had about 30 or 40 hairs just crossed over. Uh, I took those hairs off so I was less hair, unfortunately, but I just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. To say the least, I'm not going back to the same person. It's not worth the time or the money. Um, he might be very good at doing student stuff, and that seems to me what he's mostly involved in, doing student repairs. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm sure that the thicker bridges are well suited to cellos for students. Now, <laughs> this tailpiece, this tailpiece, ah, it's another one of those very frustrating things where I currently live, for whatever reason, they believe in these horrible metal things uh, with these very thick wires. The wire that goes down around the end, the button there. It, I feel that it squashes the sound. There's just the resonance is not there. This is the original tailpiece I had on. It's a plastic tailpiece with a very thin wire to go down around. And I want another one of these. Originally, when I was still in the States, uh, I asked a very accomplished luthier about changing the tailpiece to something like rosewood. And he kind of looked at me, paused for a second, thoughtfully asked, well, do you like the sound that comes out of here? I said, well, yeah, it's very resonant, especially when the cello is set up. It's, I don't really have any complaints. I was thinking it would look really nice. And he said, I cannot say anything better about the wood. In fact, the wood tailpieces may even reduce the resonance you experience. And I said, well, I, can't, I don't think I'm going to argue with you. I don't have the money to just experiment with it right now, so I'm not going to do it just for fun. Um, I'll leave this on. And now that I've put on this... Of course, this is not wood, but it seems to me that those rosewood uh, tailpieces do have these thicker wires that are coated in rubber. I mean, why? Why would you do that? Why would you squash the resonance? Rubber is known to insulate and squash, uh, to dampen resonance. It, it does. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Well. 
I had no choice. I had to get it at the time because this broke in front of my very eyes at the shop where I got that other bridge. And the, the luthier said he would just gift this one to me. Uh, I had spent a lot of money getting a bridge, rehair, sound post, and so on. I said, well, I've got no choice. That's what he had, and now I've just got to find it. And where I currently live, apparently these are not popular. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So I've got to find a way to order this and get it here. I've got to find a way that I can change and get my cello back to the most original state as possible, as soon as possible as well. Because everything that I do sounds like the cello is choking. Uh, it's got a cold maybe. Uh, maybe it even sounds in some cases like it's on the other side of a closed door or a wall and so it's just a really horrible sound and it's been getting worse and worse for the last seven years until it has degraded to this state so here's my second bow this is actually the original bow full-size bow that i got with my original full-size cello oh that brings to mind i really wish i had my original full-size cello still just to have a second decent cello to play on anyway this bow is really horrible. It's, it's thin and stringy sounding on the instrument. I mean, even when the cello is set up nicely, I didn't like the sound. I guess for some, maybe not bad, but I, it's, if you compare the two bows side by side, this one is thin and stringy. It's like, you know, pinching your nose and talking. And <laughs> it doesn't help that my cello's out of tune right now. It completely went out of tune this morning. And it's still finding its adjustment. Anyway, I'm planning on getting things repaired here in the next week or two. Uh, hopefully I can get it done sooner rather than later. It would be really nice to have a cello back in service that's halfway decent or really decent, really nice to play and listen to. Now, one thing that's out of my control uh, entirely is the weather and the climate over in this place that I'm living in. And it's just not conducive to playing a good string instrument. I don't know how professional musicians deal with it here. Um, but every time I take my cello even from my apartment to the car and then from the car to the next place I'm going to, I experience such a massive shift in tone color and, of course, intonation because the strings have all shifted uh, tension because of the uh, humidity levels. <laughs> it just... Lots of complaints. Yep, I know. Lots of complaints. But this is the this is my reality. And I hope someday that I can get back to the place that I love most and where my cello feels most at home in a drier climate. I'll keep you posted. Thanks. Send me good wishes. <laughs>